And each game in the Premier League season will start with the taking of the knee in support of the anti discrimination. No room for racism. And that message really needs to be reinforced. Awful abuse for the England players who failed in this stadium from the penalty spot less than four weeks ago. It hasn't gone away. And the fight for equality must go on. Leicester kick off to James Madison, who's still a Leicester player, despite rumours linking him with a move maybe to Arsenal. Another responsibility on the channel, so Inchu is one of the senior centre backs now. Here's Nathan Ake in the middle of the back for Manchester City. Had a successful first season with the club. Following his relegation the previous year with Bournemouth from relegation to celebration. Fernandinho, Ferran Torres, as we somewhat suspected. It was hard to pick who's going to play through the middle for Manchester City. For Pep Guardiola, who has said that he would like a team entirely of midfield players to play at the back in the middle and up front but sometimes it always looks that way almost looks that way here's Iosi Perez straight from the right hand side yeah, Gundogan coming back here just fouled in Madison he's going to be playing on the left hand side of that midfield three Madison knew the challenge was coming just stepped across it not much that Gundogan could have done about that well what a player he was last season reinvented really as a goal scoring midfield player. Manchester City's top scorer. Fernandinho as the protective element of midfield and Cole Palmer in a sort of equivalent right sided position to Gundogan, who's slightly left of centre. But it's very fluid as we know. And first chance for Leicester to set something up here with a, with a clipped in ball by Barnes. So Inchu had come forward. Indeed, he's right in the thick of it there too as well. It's been a very wet day. Heavy, heavy showers of biblical proportions. But there's been some sunshine as well. So much so <laughs> they were watering the pitch just before kickoff, despite the deluge of a few hours ago. Kasper Schmeichel, once off Manchester City a long time ago. He left in 2009. And when they've got good possession, Leicester, so Ricardo Pereira is going to play higher up the field on this right-hand side. Bertrand is just tucking in at the moment alongside the other two centre-halves. When they're out of possession, they go to a back four again. Well, Stefan took his time. And the flag has gone up against the former Leicester man in the Manchester City ranks, Riyad Mahrez. Is that Stefan regularly featuring in the cup competitions for Pep Guardiola? Soyuncu trying to make uh, Mendy turn. He did make Mendy turn, but there's no chance for the advanced Ricardo to uh, give a problem to the uh, personality filled left back of Manchester City. Ben Mendy is still at the club, though he really hasn't played as many games as he would have thought when he joined. Partly through injury, partly through. Lack of trust, I guess. And here is a man well trusted by Pep Guardiola. Gunduan trying to get the 18 year old Sami Dozi. Comes from London, signed from Millwall a couple of years back and suddenly emerged. He played three championship games in a very different pre season for the big clubs. Travel off the agenda. Touched on by Madison. Barnes, who really loves to run at defenders and shoot. 
got a new number this season as well. He's upgraded from 15 to 7. Yeah, that was a big opportunity for him. His first touch wasn't a particularly good one when it was switched out to him. He can go past people so easily onto his right foot. Yes, it's been very conservative for the Premier League clubs in terms of cashing in on their popularity around the globe. Travel very, very difficult. Leicester have stayed in England for their games. Three away games until they played at home on Wednesday against Villarreal. They're getting ready for the Super Cup. And they lost for Fana, and that's why Amate is in the team and giving away a free kick here. Yeah, Dozy just getting to the ball first there. Coming in off that left hand touchline. Got a little look of the Leroy Sane about mm. him. The way he plays. Similar height. Same position at the moment. Yeah, yeah. Well, is it within range? Kasper Schmeichel's a tough man to beat. As Stuart was saying earlier, had a, a wonderful game here. For Denmark, wonderful Euros for Denmark with Christian Eriksen trauma, which he was at the forefront of the players coping with that. And in the country to almost play for Ericsson and reach the semi-final. So close to beating England here too. Almaraz or Gundogan? Gundogan. Oh, it needed saving. It needed something of the Schmeichel textbook there to turn that aside. He does well here. It's a good free kick. Just takes a couple of steps and then gets the dive in. It's a very good save from Schmeichel. It was a very good free kick. It's an odd angle of approach by Gunduan. Almost parallel with the edge of the penalty area, his run up and whipped the ball towards that top corner. And he's going to try and do something innovative from the corner that follows. <laughs> uh, more work required, I think. That's when, it, then that's when it does feel like pre-season. Yeah, <laughs> sometimes you just want to get the ball in the box. What a good free kick this was. Two players at the end of the wall, just move out the way. It's not right in the corner, but it is a good save from Schmeichel. Here's Iose Perez. Madison. Nicely worked out. Barnes seeing a fair bit of it early on. Delighted to be back. Might have been in England's squad had he... Being fit at the end of last season. And already you see he's the outball. He's going to stay high and wide on that left hand side. Madison, before the ball even came to him, was looking to switch the play out there. We actually haven't mentioned Yuri Tielemans yet, of course, who's the man who uh, got Leicester into this fixture by that uh, stormer of a winning goal against Chelsea. Femi Vardy still going strong, short on goals towards the end of last season. But the appetite will still be there. He's got uh, a little bit of an extra competition. Pat Sandaka, a Zambian striker, has been brought in. Good one. There is Yuri Tielemans, part of the Belgian squad. It didn't have, in the end, a great European Championship, certainly not up to expectation. And just a reminder, Kevin De Bruyne, who did admit after they got knocked out that he played in that last game when he was injured. Likely to be out for a while, says Pep Guardiola. Mares. Cancelo and Mares and Ben Mendy all seem to have been for the same hairdresser. Decent run from Ferran Torres. She's trying to chest it down for the 
on Russian Gundogan. Torres, another one, of course, who was involved in the European Championship with Spain. Probably wouldn't have been a year earlier, obviously, as you all know, it was delayed for 12 months. Benefited some, and uh, certainly didn't uh, suit others, a bit like the Olympics. Portugal to the right back on the other side of the pitch, João Cancelo. Here's Fernandinho, and that business like approach of his. Interception by Madison. Calmly done by Schmeichel. Ryan Bertrand, who turned 32 a couple of days ago, has had a very good career. Was with Chelsea, won the Champions League with Chelsea, you might recall, back in 2012. Given uh, a free transfer or choosing to take a free transfer from Southampton. Some of the injured players down there, Johnny Evans being one of them. Looked a, a really bad moment, Stuart. We were here when he went off. And we took a gamble with picking him. But in the end, Leicester got it across the line. There was some real drama. One of their former players, Ben Chilwell, thought he'd equalised. VAR had different opinions. So, in Chip. Bertrand. Of Madison uh, being sold is because Leicester have been doing that at the end of a, I think the last four seasons. Uh, Question one of their top talents. And, uh, nearly came back to Barnes. It's good progress made by Ryan Bertrand. Yeah, good combination play between those two. Well, Bertrand's got forward on a couple of occasions now. Harvey Barnes going infield, then reversing the ball back out to the left back. So, aren't you? Good score in the midweek win over Villarreal. Uh, King Power Stadium. Martins in there as well. Hardy looking for anything that might drop his way. And swinging corner for Leicester City. Uh, Stefan started to come for that and could have been left high and dry. Two very good headers by Premier League player of the season. Ruben Diaz. Yeah. Mm. And the first one really well. It was decisive on the second one. The players that Leicester have sold and Bella Conte to Chelsea, then Mares to Manchester City, Harry Maguire to Manchester United, and then the latest was Ben Chilwell. So that's why the, the pundits are saying that someone might go, and Madison seems to be the one that maybe Leicester might think the time is right, we'll see. Well, there was a chance there, had that been a better pass from Bertrand, only Vardy was in. OK. Fernandinho. Here's Palmer, Manchester born. Of outings in the first team, one in the Champions League. Okay, again, Mendy. A combination, as you mentioned, injuries to Mendy, poor performances at times, can't be trusted defensively. Somebody that's been trusted over the years to score goals, Jamie Vardy. It's 50 years since Leicester's only win in the Shield. It was the Charity Shield back then. And they qualified by being champions of the second tier, the old second division, because 
Arsenal won the double, but just climbed as you could do perhaps in those days to take part in the Shield game. So Leicester took on Liverpool, who were runners up in the FA Cup to Arsenal. That's the 49th Shield game. This is the 99th, 50 years later. His distribution is one of his many strong points, but the pound's caught this time. Ake. And Portugal also disappointed in the uh, Euro 2020. Ruben Dias was part of that. Cancelo didn't play because of. Covid and he was badly missed. Here's Mendy getting a good cross, and uh, that wasn't quite where intended. It didn't go into the back of Sunchu's net, fortunately for the Turkish defender. He's trying to clear it out a bit more towards us, Stuart. Yeah, he took up a good position, then completely miskicked it. Almost came off his shin in the end. Good play from Mendy down the left hand side, whipped that crossing quickly. He's obviously a good player because otherwise I think he would have come and gone, but he's still here fighting for his place. Manchester City corner. Um, an intriguing one. That didn't lead to what we admirers would love to do. Strike one past his old teammate, Casper Schmeichel. Well, I think it's intended for him to hit this first time on his mm. left foot. Decided not to. Took the first touch onto his right foot. And just struck it with the outside of the boot in the end. Well, he's just played half a dozen times against uh, Leicester since he left the Foxes. He scored a couple of times and made a couple of goals. It's a decent start against Manchester City for Leicester City. Absolutely, they're finding that little pocket of space, or well, Madison is. Barnes is playing high and wide on that left-hand side, he's taking Cancelo out with him. Just leaving space for Madison to get onto the ball. They can play this way. Uh, the quality of the play we've hardly mentioned, Wilfred and Didi. Uh, screen that back line so well, whether it's a three or a four, is it? Be obviously in the different passages of play. Tony says play on. Leicester still got the ball, and they're probably quite happy about that now because the shot needed saving. And when you give him a, a sight of goal like that, Jamie Vardy, his eyes light up, and the net sometimes bulges. Yeah, Jose Perez just finding that bit of space in field. Wasn't a great pass to Vardy. He was missing that near post as well. Stefan was taking no chances. Here's the challenge. It's a high boot by Palmer on Soyuncu. Yeah, it would have been a foul, but a good refereeing, really. Start with this Leicester corner. So the first 20 minutes here at Wembley. So didn't you? That's a nice kick by Tielemans and Mendy can get Mara's away here. City streaming forward, Manchester City that is. Mara's one on one with Soyuncu, deflected and ending up as a corner at the other end, right from. Uh, and that's the corner of their own. Yeah. Mistake by Tielemans there. Mendy finds the right pass. It's good defended by Soyuncu. He knows that Mares wants to come back onto his left foot. And you see the other players that are recovering. They're getting tight as well. Amate goes out there. Such a threat when he comes in on his left foot. And, uh, variation on an orthodox corner. It passes. And there's another one. 
Not to Morales from Mendy, and we're back where we began. Two games in the Premier League last season, both away wins. The Leicesters were sensational very early in the campaign. They won 5 2 at the Etihad Stadium. Three of the goals were penalties. <laughs> well, we shouldn't laugh really because they're, they're trying to put this. Sometimes in a match as public as this, the teams won't work on their main set pieces, keep them under wraps for when league points uh, are at stake. And they start to in London a week tomorrow at Tottenham, now managed by uh, Espirito Santo. OK, he's had it. Paris claims that he didn't get the final touch, but the throw goes Manchester City's way. And he did score one of his rare Premier League goals in the other game, which was played at Power Stadium. And Manchester City won 2 0 much later in the season. So look how narrow the fullbacks are for Manchester City. Usually the fullbacks go really wide and try and make the pitch as big as possible. Man City's fullbacks aren't doing that. They're tucking in alongside Fernandinho. Almost to make a two centre halves and three midfield players just in front of them. Just looking at the two sides, Stuart, that Leicester have Brendan Ross been able to pick more of his first choice players than Pep Guardiola. The youngsters Palmer and Idozi. And they're hard to fill the boots of famous absentees. A challenging one for Bertrand. Nice and then in turn by Ryan Bertrand. And pressing by Palmer. Aggressive. Wasn't quite supported by his teammates. And he's kept Leicester just pinned in close to the corner flag. And he's a quality player, Palmer. When I saw him play for the U side, he often played in the position that Mares is playing. High and wide on that right-hand side. Again, a left-footed player that loves to come in field. Here he's playing on the right-hand side of the midfield three. Ricardo. And Telemans. Madison's ball. In behind Mendy. Cardi waiting in the middle. Ricardo in possession. Isaac oh, Perez just trying to steer it in in the stronger contact, and he might just have done that. Good play from Leicester, started by Madison. There's the switch of play. Pereira, who we've talked about, getting high and wide on this right hand side. And he finds the right cut back here. Tielemans doesn't strike it particularly well, nor does Perez. On attempts, just a hint of greater danger from Leicester City with their greater share of possession. And Pidi winning it cleverly, passing it sensibly. And Barnes coming in off Madison's layoff, and Vardy trying to follow up and give Leicester a, a lead that's looking more likely at the moment. That was all started by Ndidi winning the ball back off Palmer. Madison just trying to link everything up. Again, it was Harvey Barnes coming in on his right foot. Madison nearly stealing it away from Ake then. 
Mm, and look how close the fullbacks are to the two centre halves. And he's tucked right in field. Gundogan has come out to the left hand side with a dozy. Stops him pretty emphatically. Madison, easy to be found again, just finding space between the lines. Must have certainly benefiting from his involvement. Here he is again, pulling the strings at the moment. Bertrand. Now indeedy. So aren't you? Tielemans making a bit of space for himself. And here's Madison further forward this time. Vardy's on the sprint. Ake's across and did enough. So that Stefan could come and claim it. She just had the wrong angle on the pass. Good play from Madison again. He wants the ball all the time. He wants to prove to Brendan Rodgers he's worth keeping. He's good, he's very good, James Madison. There are times where, just like um, most creative players, you can't boss every game you play in. And he's just been questioned once or twice on that particular issue. And he's looking very good today in the first 25 minutes here at Wembley. Ed Ozick. Good doing. Come on, man. Actually got between Soyuncu and Bertrand. They could have taken up a really dangerous position as Vardy was doing at the other end. Well, there's the shot from Harvey Barnes. Deflects nicely for Vardy. Straight at the goalkeeper. Stefan. That's a big chance for Vardy. He just comes off his toe rather than his laces. Didn't really go through the back of it, did he? I'm trying to keep it down, I guess, but uh, couldn't keep it on a trajectory past the goalkeeper. And Cancelo steps in, and uh, there's a bit of loitering at the back there. Really allowed uh, Perrin Torres to take the pocket of Daniel Amate. So if he do win it in the uh, territory and give Adozi a chance to keep in this run going, but it is a, a massive step up for the 18-year-old. They've been playing their games, uh, Stuart, at the uh, academy, the training ground stadium at Manchester City. It's not quite Wembley. It's a horrible finish in the end. It's a big chance for him as well. Gundogan just laid it into his path. Got to be hitting the far post there. And then for Barnes. Let me, uh, let me look round for a culprit here. So Cancelo blocked him off. He certainly does. He's not even looking at the ball, is he, Cancelo? It's a poor challenge, really. That's why Brendan Rodgers was. Straight across to the fourth official. And we do have VAR, which was deemed a hit in Euro 2020. The, in comparison with what the Premier League had served up with the technology since it was introduced. And to be fair to the PGMOL, we seem to have listened to those criticisms. They're the ones in charge of VAR in this country. But we'll see, as we said at the start. Good leap. Uh, Marte. That was a slightly misjudged tackle. Look how Gundogan played a Champions League game here, a final for Borussia Dortmund against Bayern Munich. 
from 2013. He scored a goal from uh, the penalty spot. Ended up on the losing side. Ended up on the losing side of that challenge as well. Ake. No extra time here. In this uh, early stage of proceedings. Some competitive fixtures. It's level after 90 minutes. Would go straight to penalties. As it did last season. To Arsenal and Liverpool. It goes in. Telemans. Uh, Madison half thought about that, putting that. There was a lot of space to drop it into for Vardy to chase, but the ball didn't come quite as he wanted it. He took the safer option. And he thought he was fouled. A strong word with the referee. Half an hour gone. Well, actually calling the tune. Leicester looking the more likely. I think they've been the better side. I guess they've got nearer their first team out. And Rogers, as you mentioned, has been able to pick a really strong side here. It's been some good combination play down the left-hand side. Madison's finding that bit of space in the number 10 role. Pereira's driving down this near side. Second home for Manchester City, this stadium. It's their 13th game here in just three and a half years. And won nine in a row, actually, the first nine of that, until they lost back-to-back -back FA Cup semi-finals. And after the more recent defeat to Chelsea here last season, they then, a week later, made off with the Carabao Cup. The expense of Tottenham. Barnes trying to get away. Always full of purpose. Here he is again to show that purpose. Harvey Barnes for Leicester City. Nearly. Got it back again. Just touched a little heavily. Whether he could have hit it first time, only he knows. Well, they won the ball back off Fernandinho. Here's the combination play again. Hardy. She may have hit it. Slightly too firmly. Very difficult for Vance to get that under control. They do look the dominant side at the moment. Up comes Sorrenti. Probably Vance's dad, Paul, was a not a Premier League old first division striker, but a professional striker. Scored a lot of goals in the lower divisions. Picked up a little bit of that, I'm sure, in the back garden as a boy. Marty goes towards the near post. It's over him, good header away by Ake. <laughs> Again, Tiedemann's not quite getting his timing right. Quite the opposite of what happened here. His right foot in May. And he would say, well, he'll attack the other end. Again, he scored in the second half. He'll get it right then, Yuri Tiedemann's. Mares thinking he was fouled on this occasion. Been fairly lenient so far. Mariola not just asked about Jack Grealish at yesterday's press conference, but uh, Harry Kane, who's been linked with Manchester City for a while now. And of course, Lionel Messi, who suddenly became available. He's uh, great connections, of course. And the Manchester City head coach. Mendy. I feel we're on the brink of one of those heavy showers that have been uh, much a feature of the English climate over the past few days. there making sure Torres couldn't run in behind Mares nice little touch from Palmer Mares 
to Edozi, supported by Mendy. Edozi has his own ideas, though, and he leaves Jose Perez in his wake. That was a, was a glimmer of his promise. His confidence, too. And Madison, though, is in a buoyant mood in the blue of Leicester. That's from Vardy. Now Bertrand. He's got a fair turn of foot. And he's worked it well for Isaac Perez. Madison going towards the near post. And that's a poor cross. Vardy was beyond the far post. And a wasted piece of play from Leicester that time. But again, getting into a good area. Yeah, Ricardo Torreira did really well there, didn't he? Driving in field, reversing it back out into the space for Perez. Could have played it first time for the run of Madison. Try to get across the front of the near post. Here's Ruben Diaz. Mendy. Manchester City pretty much to the structure of the team, haven't they? They're used to more flexibility maybe from Pep Guardiola. Obviously he's got a lot of players missing today. <laughs> Tell that uh, Manchester City are attacking the end behind which the Leicester City fans are, and Morris is running the gauntlet in that respect. And a hero, of course, of the Foxes in the past. In the role of the villain here. He's got a chance to whip this one into a very dangerous area. Zonal marking from Leicester. Almost along the six yard box here. Yeah, this was in the Winter the Shield team that Leicester fielded five years ago when they were the champions. And of course, was the goalkeeper. Not too many left now. Mark Albrighton is on the bench. Hardy, of course, has scored. And here, that's deep. And the Terry's fix it away. Back by Mendy. And possibly could have run behind for a goal kick, but he needed to be told, Ricardo. And with those, he was looking. Any miscalculation. Almost feels at this stage of the first half, Stuart, that they've uh, had a double session, both teams, yesterday, which, of course, does happen around the, uh, around the pre-season games. The, the games themselves are training sessions, as we said, and emphasized. Aaron Torres tries to get through, rather threw himself to the ground, didn't appeal when he got up, to his credit. And silver where at stake here does make it more than pre-season. But uh, they're blowing a bit, the two teams. First glimpse of Ferran Torres, really, in the half. OK. A couple of spells, I think, at the Euros, where he played at centre forward, and Maratta wasn't playing particularly well for Spain. Well, he got one of the biggest roars from the crowd, didn't he, Fernandinho, when his name was read out? Firm favourite with the City fans, the Man City fans, that is. Not quite as big as Grealish is, though. <laughs> Hasn't kicked a ball for them yet. Well done in the last couple of days. By uh, Manchester City meeting a release clause. Very different to the Harry Kane circumstances. But are absolutely upfront about uh, how the deal happened. They never thought anyone would pay that kind of money when they put it into the contract. Uh, Greenish has done so well and uh, I guess inflation and all that. 
It's a lot of money, but he is a very good player. Very much the people's choice in this country too. And here goes Gundogan. And he didn't play it quite where those who could have had maximum response. Mendy's ball over Palmer. And cries from the other end, the Manchester City end, about whether that was a foul by uh, the defender. What do you think, Bertrand? I think Bertrand came across, he defended it well. It's just the arm that's up from Cole Palmer. That's why he's given the free kick. Yeah, he's Leicester's been penalised, yeah. Both <laughs> Pep wanted the penalty. Brendan Rodgers wanted the free kick that has been awarded. That was good defending from Bertrand. And he was that little bit wide, he saw the danger. Palmer had made the run into a very good area. Do you remember Ryan Bertrand? Um, Leicester had a famous 9-0 win at Southampton mm. in the record books. Ryan Bertrand playing for Southampton was sent off after the first goal. And so he's got a bit of history with Leicester. And now uh, if you can't beat them, you join them. Well, he'll always say it wasn't his fault. I wasn't on the field for those other eight goals. Well, it wasn't. <laughs> but playing with ten men might have had something to do with it. Well, Pep Guardiola's protest for, on that penalty incident has led to uh, a yellow card from Paul Tierney. Something uh, we have seen him uh, a little carried away from time to time, but what manager doesn't? Sounds as though you're talking from experience there, Martin. <laughs> and you are as well. <laughs> Never been yellow carded. Here's uh, Nathan Ake. Never been a manager either. Assistant maybe, but not the boss. They're always the troublemakers, the assistants. I believe so. <laughs> and that rain is starting to fall now. Narrow position again that you've highlighted, Stuart. Just not sure what it achieves, really. Then the when the ball comes to Mr. Flat back to Ake. Let's see what Cancelo does with it now. There's the space out that little bit wider, but they're not going forward with it. That's a good turn from Palmer. And this is perhaps why I've been working on it because uh, it led to a burst forward and a not very good shot from Jao Cancelo. Kyle Walker, of course, does get into that position when he is the, the right back. But normally starts a bit wider and then comes in field. That's a great turn from Palmer. That's what he can do. Possession kicked away by the Leicester skipper. Now Ake. Mendy. Manchester City wins to the Premier League for the third time in four seasons. Won the League Cup four years in a row. Still stuck without the Champions League. Favourites one would have thought going into the final against Chelsea. Get a number on them. Karen Torres. Now Sammy Dozic. Gundogan shots on, and from uh, his perspective, it's a bit of a waste to become quite a marksman over the last 12 months or so. Yeah, falls for him really nicely here. Perez starts to go with the runner, just opens up for him, but he can't keep it down. He's trying to wrap his foot round it, Gundogan. Made some exceptional forward runs last year, didn't he? Scoring so many goals. Last few seconds of the first half, Stuart. As Jack Grealish wonders perhaps whether he's going to get the call for the second half. What have you made of it to this point? Well, I've been quite impressed with Leicester. Firstly, in the first 30 minutes, I thought they had good shape to their team. They knew where the space was. 
They looked sharp, they looked bright, they defended well. Just the last 10 minutes or so, Manchester City are starting to get their rhythm. And just look at the position that Palmer takes up. He's trying to get in behind Ndidi, trying to get in behind Barnes. They need so. more from this man on the ball now. And, uh, Leicester haven't been a counter-attacking team because they've actually had good midfield possession, but it's a counter-attack this time. And here's Barnes. Paul Tinney was right on the spot, saw nothing wrong. Bertrand steps in well, though. It's a turnover that Leicester can really use to their advantage. And Madison and Barnes. And it's hit the post off the goalkeeper from Vardy. That's as close as we've had to a first-half goal as we go into added time. Well, I think it ends up being a great save, doesn't it? Either with his trailing hand or his trailing leg. Big chance for Vardy. Barnes, Leicester close to breaking through here. And it wouldn't be uh, flattering them. It is the window and tidying up. Mendy passed their way out of the uh, period of defence. Well, that was a turnover that very nearly resulted in a goal, wasn't it? Both sides are look, they're most threatening when they turn over the ball in midfield. And in towards Ayosu Perez, who knocks it down to Madison. It couldn't quite bring it under his control. The last sortie from Riyad Mahrez against the Foxes, and it might be a telling one. Gunduan. Here's Hidosi. Trying to get it back to Ferran Torres. That's the end of the first half. Temi Vardy, the closest to giving Leicester, which would probably over the piece be a deserved lead over the 45 minutes. Stuart, this is... Uh, this is the big chance, isn't it? There you see Bertrand winning the ball back. Goes wide, Barnes just lifts it into the box. It ends up being a very good save. Part, I think part hand, part leg. He's going one way, just gets something on it. It's a good right hand from him. It's enough to keep it out. And a big chance for Vardy, and a big chance for Leicester. And a good save by the American goalkeeper. Pep Guardiola has picked up a yellow card, his team haven't picked up a goal yet. Just to emphasise again, they're a little below strength compared to Leicester. But at half-time, they're level in the Community Shield at Wembley, nil-nil. Well, Vardy had two big chances, didn't he? That one where he hit it straight at the goalkeeper. Straight on, the one right at the end of the first half, when he's trying to play it back across him. Second half underway. And no changes to this point. Ricardo, challenged by Edozi, cleared by Amate. Over Vardy, met by Nathan Ake. Nice silky play by Cole Palmer again. And Bertrand relishing his challenge against Mares. Not a great kick by Kasper Schmeichel that time. That's a, a ball that had been hit a little more softly that might have got Vardy down that inside left channel. He acknowledged the intention, was disappointed with the execution. Let's remind you of the teams. Ake. Mares. That's the city firmly on the map now of uh, top level football in England and in Europe too. They're in the Europa League. They, just a little bit concerned that that might have. Caused the Kasper Schmeichel some problem with his far post as it does. He tried to cross it rather than bend it in. It shows he has got a right foot as well. Tries to get to the byline, chops it back onto his right foot. Just for a moment there. Ooh, it's not that far away, is it? Here's uh, Soyuncu. Well judged by Ruben Diaz. 
got the best out of himself in joining Manchester City at the start of last season and the best out of John Stones, who had his star had waned a bit. Became the Manchester City wonder wall defensively. Got Stones back on track with the England national team. Well, everybody thought he was going to play alongside Laporte, didn't they? Yes, I'm Eric Laporte, and now of Spain. Another one who's uh, missing today. Very much a, a Frenchman in most other respects, but now a Spain international. And the man who scored the last uh, winning goal here for Manchester City to win the League Cup, the Carabao Cup, at the end of April. And the goal that Manchester City are attacking now in the second half. Mendy. Handed up by Soonchu. Barnes. They've got the ball further forward in the first half, but making good tracks here. Trying a, a little give and go with Madison. Doesn't quite come off. Tell who's warming up. Yeah, not a good pass from Ake. That's uh, a dozy. There is Jack Grealish. Didn't affect Euros quite as much as he would have probably have liked to. No, he did the the Germany win. England in, in beat Germany. He was very much to the fore in the big moments in that. Here is Barnes. And using Bertrand's run as a decoy. Trying to get infield, but he ran into traffic. Mendy. But those are ahead of him. And then the end to Lukai Gunduan. Vardy, it's a Vardy position. Is it a Vardy finish? Good block by Ruben Diaz. He still has the knack. Finding that right channel to uh, get away from defenders. Well, here come Manchester City. And Mares. And uh, a drastic action needed to be taken. And Bertrand gets the yellow card for doing just that. And he goes across Bertrand. He's running at Amate then. Sanchu wasn't going to get there. He knew exactly what he was doing. Bertrand deserved the yellow card. What a good chance this is. We saw one good free kick in the first half from Goodwin. Mares maybe will look to strike this with his left foot. Well, you would imagine Kasper Schmeichel, a deep thinker about the game, would have his own theories about what Riyad Mahrez does. From the time that they were teammates together and the time that he's uh, faced him since he moved from one city to another. But he is the favourite to take it, but not the only candidate. I think he scored with a free kick in their last pre-season game. Yeah, he I mentioned Idozi scored because it's been such a surprise he stepped up. Mahrez has also scored in the pre-season games as well. He's on the ground running. A bit more time off in the summer, maybe, than any of his teammates. But here he goes, Riyad Mahrez. And he looks skywards in disappointment. And that was a really poor effort in the end. Doesn't go for power. Tries to go with accuracy. It's underneath it. Good way over the bar in the end. And Madison was on the ground in case it went underneath the wall. See more and more teams in that draft excluded down. Pitched on by Barnes. Pitch shortly wide to Ruben Diaz by Ake. Astrid home to Wolves in their first game. A week today.
with Jose. Credit to Sam Adozi. Not everything he tried in the first half came off. Some of it by some distance didn't come off, but he's obviously been reassured by his manager and his teammates. Do what you can do. Get at them. They don't know that much about you. Michel Cancela. Forward towards uh, Palmer. He's to fight for it, but done that successfully. Ake. Those are giving width on that far side. Into Farron Torres. Now Jao Cancelo from Torres trying to pull away. And he's done just that. Follow up from Gunduan. It's a great run by Ferran Torres and a very good pass. Yeah, he just took his touch straight into Amate. Just probably wanted to chest it into his path, but he came to try to go back across the centre back. Well, they've had more shots, haven't they, on target? Leicester. And they were the better team in that first half. Two big chances for Vardy. Torres was one of a, a good number of Manchester City players who got into double figures in goal scoring in all competitions. Finished with 13, seven of them in the Premier League. He scored 131 goals in all, but failed to score in the final game. The Champions League final, no less. And they haven't scored here. Ruben Diaz, Anderson leading the press from Leicester. And Leicester City like that, they want to try and play around it. They're good at that. But, uh, not quite into their full stride. Dino's trying to cut from under it. Almost ten minutes gone in the second half, still nil-nil at Wembley. A big piece of silverware at stake. The charity shield is a weighty object. Community shield now. Manchester City corner. Right in front of their own supporters. And they favoured the short one. Mares. And it's a blast at goal by Kuntuan and again from the edge of the box. Lacking the composure that brought him so many goals last season. Well, he's looking slightly worried now, Brendan Rodgers. Man City are just beginning to take control here. This is a short corner, which they actually get right on this occasion. So aren't you with the first block? She just gets underneath it and slices it over the bar, Kuntuan. He tried that short corner on two or three occasions in the first half and got it all wrong. That was much better. Sure, so, being a London boy, he's got to uh, your friends and family here. Sam Adozi for his baptism. But Cancelo has to chase. It's not a hell for leather game by any means, but the quality shown when the attacks are got right is uh, of a very high order. It hasn't yet produced a goal. Adozi. Yes, to play with Gunduan. Adozi still going. Getting plenty of support from those in the light blue and that the corner of the stands. And it's a poor one by Suyuncu. And uh, Mahrez had the chance to really punish it. 
And now Leicester break with Barnes straying from the left-hand side. Harvey Barnes again. Wins Leicester a corner. Well, it did look as though Mares could have shot that little bit earlier at the other end. As he didn't take his chance, suddenly Leicester were on the counter-attack. Burton to take the corner. Vardy waiting by the near post. I see Perez is in there as well. Is there someone coming around the back here? The deeper one. It's not deep enough to go past the goalkeeper. <laughs> and it was dropping not quite quickly enough for Tielemans. Oh, and there's a, a real break on for Manchester City here. And Riyad Mahrez, is he leaving his old club in his wake here and taking the community shield from them? He didn't have the legs. Well, in the first half, we saw Tielemans. And there's a couple of balls up that came to the edge of the box. That time, it was Ricardo Pereira. This is a good first touch to take it the other side of the defender. The second one just got caught under his feet. And he can't hit the target. To the relief of Ricardo, who can't believe what he's just done. He's got away with it. It's been end-to-end -end stuff in the last few yeah. minutes. A much perkier second half already. Sayonchi. Madison, in the positions that he took up well in the first half, has a go from long distance, but finishing hasn't been quite up to the standard of the approach play. There he is, finding that bit of space again, Madison. Not seen too much of him in the second half. Diaz is the player that eventually comes out and tries to get the block in. As you said, he doesn't finish it particularly well, does he? He looks very accomplished, really, as a central forward, Ferran Torres. He got a hat trick for Spain against the Germany, no less. Movement's good, he's really stationary. He's trying to run in behind again here. And Mares can't quite uh, drop it on the money, but it's a uh, good enough ball to produce a uh, safe header from Ricardo behind for the corner. I didn't know what was around him. You're absolutely right, it's good movement from Ferran Torres. Came short, then tried to spin in behind his centre back. Pereira had to come round on the cover. Last time here, Manchester City won with a goal from a set piece here at this end of the stadium to win the League Cup. Back in April, here they go for the Community Shield, maybe in a similar vein. And that's going to be another corner. Mares lurking with intent. Guardiola weighing up the options of uh, who to bring on these guys. Relatively untried players amongst his substitutes, but some senior men as well. And his team are knocking on the door with the starting 11. The crowd, Kasper Schmeichel, to match the city. And he is well positioned again. 
Mendy. That's a magnificent pass. Is it going to lead to uh, a big finish here for Manchester City? Man couldn't quite find the right combination. Back with Edozi. Torres waits in the middle. Palmer's making a, a forward run to the corner of the penalty area. Ricardo gets his challenge in. Fernandinho again. Joao Cancelo. Okay. Puts it out. Andre to uh, Sam Adozic. Whether it's cramp, <laughs> that's the way you treat cramp. So it's not just the physical energy, emotional energy. It's such a massive day for the 18-year-old, and uh, he could could go down as the player who gives away to Jack Grealish for yep. Grealish's debut. He's in the sort of position. Rodri's ready to come on ahead of Grealish, but it is about the hour mark and the managers think about ringing the changes, plenty of potential for changes here. Six substitutes aside allowed, and there is the concussion experiment going on, which includes the uh, Community Shield, which could uh, lengthen that list even more. One hopes not, because obviously it's a serious injury to do it. Well, Man City have been better in the second half. They've started to dominate the play. They've created one or two good opportunities. And now it looks as though we are going to see the most expensive signing in Premier League history. Well, his last competitive game was in this stadium against Italy. He has so many fans. When he was on the bench for England, they were calling for him, the England fans, very early in proceedings. It's Rodri for Gunduan. And uh, Edosi gives way to Jack Grealish. Two different kinds of welcomes. Mm. <laughs> That's the friendly one. Well, is it set up for him to uh, be such an influencer? That Manchester City take the uh, Community Shield back to the Etihad from their second home to their main home. Ricardo, it's a clever pass. Nice touch lane down this time. Bertrand stepped in, had to get the ball on the yellow card. Picked off by Jao Cancelo. And head of Mares this time. He's just jogging up in support. Cancelo tries to uh, be a right footed Mares, really. Leicester have already had one penalty shootout in this pre-season against uh, Burton Albion, managed by Jimmy Floyd Hasselbank. And they lost it <laughs> a couple of weeks back, but not with too many of these players taking part. Somewhere on the bench. Here's Barnes. Oh, and that kept on bending. And Stefan, in the end, trying to cover it. Well, I think he was looking for the run of Jamie Vardy here. Vardy's run, he just tries to get across the front of our gate. He actually puts too much on it. Could easily have crept into that far post. It's a decent game. He's just looked a little bit rusty with his final boys. Final decision. Harley Barnes. There's another one who scored against Villarreal. And it's going swimmingly. They were 3 0 up, and then Wesley Fofana was fouled in a way that left some. Damage that will take a while to repair. 
You can see how the possession has changed in this second half. City now just about in front. Mandy. He's going to have to contend with a fair bit of this up and down the country. He's quite used to being the focus of attention, Jack Grealish. And here he is, in position he can do damage, but uh, indeed he is uh, a master at diffusing dangers like that. Ake. Dina getting forward, it was an ambitious pass. There wasn't really a, that amount of space to play into. Well, he's going to play further forward now, Fernandinho. Rodri's gone in as the holding midfield player. Fernandinho's gone to where Palmer was playing. Palmer's gone over to where Gundogan was playing. And Jack Grealish has gone out to the outside left position. Thank you. Piece is picked up here by Barnes, flattened by Rodri. Paul Tenney with an easy decision to make. A quick free kick. Something to the referee's liking. Probably was asked if uh, it could be taken. Switch of play from João Cancelo. Right back to left back. And the to Palmer in this slightly more left sided role now. Grealish very much from the left, as he loves to do so. Twisting, turning, and capable of terrorising, but not then. Once again, it's good play from Ndidi. He knew he had to get round the cover or come inside. So as soon as Grealish came onto his right foot, he blocked off that shot. He's an outstanding midfield player, Ndidi. You know, I mentioned, we, we both mentioned Madison possibly being the player sold, but indeed is probably the one that would attract the most interest. Depends what you want from a holding midfield player. Some coaches want a playmaker, somebody that maybe isn't so good defensively, but gets on the ball and makes things tick. Others want a good defensive player, someone who reads danger, can drop in between the centre-halves. I think the ideal combination we somebody could do both. Okay. Grealish to Palmer. And uh, could well be Leicester's throat. Tillemans thought so. Tillemans was right. Bernardo Silva being the ball boy. And there is a player that can do both jobs. Tielemans defending well, but also a very good player with the ball. And here comes a raft of changes from Brendan Rodgers. Familiar place of Michael Brighton. Isaac Perez is off. Jamie Vardy is off for Hanson Dakar. It's Ambien. And here's a, a young man who's been doing very well in the preseason. He was out on loan at Luton last season. Keenan Dewsbury Hall. Getting uh, rave reviews from Brendan Rodgers. And the other, uh, along with uh, Daka, Uber Sumare from the French champions, Lille. And he replaces Henry Tielemans, go alongside Wilfred Ndidi. I'm not going to take Ndidi off in these circumstances. So with 70 minutes gone, Brendan Rodgers rings the changes for Leicester City. Ruben Diaz. 
And again, it's just straight swaps. All Brighton out on the left-hand side. Dewsbury Hall playing where Madison was playing. Decker up front. A lovely change of direction by Palmer. Nowhere for Ndidi to put it except into space, really. Uh, it's connected by Ruben Diaz and Manchester City plot another attack here. Played much better in the second half. And Ferran Torres can get this down. And the flag then goes up. And that's the kind of situation that the players and also the medical fraternity in football, they don't like to see. Kasper Schmeichel could have got injured, then Ferran Torres could have got injured there. Oh, it's a tight call. I'm not sure. I was looking at the left back, Bertrand. But the argument for doing what's happened yeah. is if Ferran Torres puts the ball in the net, even if he gets clattered, <laughs> then the flag goes up, then the goal can stand mm. if it's not offside. So I, I see the value in that because we take a lot away yeah. through VAR. But at the cost of injuries, maybe it's... Uh... I was just looking at the... as the ball was played for, I saw the run and Amate tried to step up to play offside. And the linesman actually on the system wasn't quite up with the play. And I think he gambled on that decision. Well, Bernardo Silva... Is the, uh, the left-hand member of this duo as we look. And Ben Knight is the uh, youngster, he's a striker, comes from Ipswich, he was signed from Ipswich Town. Wasn't perhaps the best season that Bernardo Silva's had at Manchester City last season. He's, uh, in periods where his name has been, if not first on the team sheet, certainly in the top three. So, with Mares doing particularly well, that sort of shut out maybe that position that he loves so much, Bernardo Silva, and Phil Foden can play there as well. One of the missing England men today. He's also got an injury, as well as uh, being granted some extended leave with the uh, England involvement in the Euro not finishing until July the 11th. Here's Albright, just signed a new deal. Side that uh, is coming back, but not coming back quickly enough. And Riyad Mahrez. There have been uh, some penalty shootouts here quite recently, haven't there? Well, certainly <laughs> has. Some big ones. Yeah, the semi final, of course, between Italy and Spain. Italy involved again. First team in the history of the European Championship to win two. Penalty shootouts in the same competition. Here's Roderick. Fernandinho. Mendy. Grealish. Here's Bernardo Silva. Silva round the back, and can he pick out a pass here? Not, uh, an inviting one. It was retrieved by Rodri. Ake. Jan Cancela. Mendy. Grealish. Bernardo Silva. And no one really attacking it. And of course, with Aguero gone, and even further back, Edin Dzeko not really replaced like for like. You're right about Bernardo Silva. A couple of seasons ago, he was one of the first picks, wasn't he? Mm. He was absolutely outstanding. And he just went off the ball slightly last season. Mares came to the fore. And into the last 15 minutes of the 2021 Community Shield. Brian Thede. 
Grealish. Unless they're getting around him, but a nice one too with Knight. Let's not to get the foul that City fans wanted, that Grealish himself wanted. Nice goalkeeping by Stefan. Good positioning, calm header. Andy's cross. Not the greatest defensive header by Bertrand. And in the end by Barnes. Going to make another couple of substitutions here, Leicester. Well, Luke Thomas is the left back for a good part of last season. It's Bertrand's debut. He also carrying a yellow card, so thanks in that. And uh, another play coming on, well known to both sets of fans. And so Thomas. Leads Pelecci Iannaccio is going to replace Harvey Barnes. Iannaccio was in the Manchester City squad on the team sheet, won the League Cup here in 2016. He didn't get on the pitch. And, uh, and he seemed at the uh, outset of a very promising career in Manchester City. Leicester tries them away. Played a, a lot as an understudy to Vardy, but last season a fair amount with Vardy. <laughs> well, he's not I've got the most weight to throw around the night, but uh, interfere with the progress of Wilf and Didi. Another player at night that excelled when Man City won the Youth Cup on a couple of occasions. Cooked. Well, the Dakar who came short for it actually. A really prolific goal scorer of uh, Salzburg in Austria. And, uh, winner of leagues and cups. Good chance for him. Yeah, I'm sure what he's made of to a wider audience. Here's Knight. Made a great run. If he was thinking about that again, he might think about taking it with his left foot, just touching it with the inside of his left foot onto his right, rather than let it run across his body and it ran away from him. Ball Brighton. He's come out to the left-hand side. To thread it through for Iannaccio. Is still out there, still trying to talk to his old team. And here's Ken and Dewsbury Hall, who uh, is a, a Leicestershire lad. Ake. Jean Cancelo. Ruben Diaz. They have to. Changed the Mac four, Manchester City. They must have just changed their left back in the uh, defensive department. Here he is, Will Thomas. Made in the FA Cup final. But he won, and he, uh, <laughs> he's got them all swimming around him, and in the end, comes up smiling. Well, he lost the ball, won it back, lost it again. He's a normal action midfield player, Sumari. From Paris, he's in the PSG youth system. And then 
decided to take a chance and going to Lille. Oh, well, it's worked out for him. And he finds himself in England with Leicester City. Mistakes being made now, a bit of fatigue maybe. With the recovery coming from Ake, Dewsbury Hall. Is there going to be a, a winning goal here? Or are we going to go to penalties for some eight minutes away? He's kept it. Fernandinho. Rodri, now Mendy, trying to move the opposition around as they do so well, game in, game out, Manchester City, all Brighton, strong in the challenge. Didi. Thomas will get there. And Bill Brighton's got a bit of space. Truthfully, Hall wants it. Bill Brighton decides. Oh, to Nacho uh, lost it. And he's had the wherewithal to chase back and get it back again. And he please his manager. Been very little to separate them, Stuart. I know that's an obvious thing to say with it being nil-nil. But maybe it'll change now as Stefan comes out. Back is up again, Stefan's down again. And uh, Paul Tinney says play on. Well, that was a good run and a good ball played in behind. I think Stefan just about got there. You're right. I think Leicester were the better team in the first half. Man City have been the better team in the second half. Grealish. Well, Leicester have made so many changes now. It's just a case of can the new players adapt to the style, the system. Can they get a grip on the game here? Right, trying to run in behind again. Switched out to Bernardo Silva. Mendy. Flip it in, a good touch by Thomas, but it's still with City, Mares and João Cancelo. And Grealish is there at the far post, is this his big moment? And in the end, well, in the end the flag went up. Trying to set up Ben Knight for a spectacular moment for the teenager. It must have been Grealish that was offside when that ball was played back across. address announcement welcoming the fans back which we can only echo Stuart it's so much more fun commentating when you can use the emotions of those in the stadium not just the the players and the coaches as we had for such a an awkward period we were glad to have the football of course and very grateful for the opportunity to be in ground no mistake about that but it feels proper again Proper thing in a football match will be a late winning goal. We might have one here for Leicester City. Yes, Nacho pursued by Ake. And at times they will play with two up front. Nacho will come in from that right hand side to play alongside Daka. Surely is a, a penalty. Surely. But he just let it go. And that's what Manchester City is saying. And they didn't score from the advantage, but Ian Acho went down. It broke for Dakar. Stuart Robson. Well, here it is again. Ake took too long on the ball. 
He misses it completely, and then he brings down Ian Nacho. That's a penalty, and the referee's right to allow the advantage. Sloppy play from Ake. He missed the ball completely. Ian Nacho's going to run away from him. The referee's got a decision to make. Is it a deliberate attempt to bring down the player, which will mean a red card, even though it's in the box? And he's only given him a yellow. Well, that's for Fernandinho for, for arguing. For But I don't think VAR will change the decision. Now, what's he going to do with Ake? Ake's moved away as if he might fear a more drastic punishment, as if giving away the penalty, which might decide the destiny of the shield, is not enough. Well, Manchester City won't let this go. Well, we have to say it's a good save from Stefan. Can he do it again from the penalty spot? Well, I mentioned that they lost the penalty shootout a couple of weeks ago against Burton Albion. And you're going to tell me Ian Nacho is the player that missed it? He missed, was one of those who missed the penalty, yeah. His penalty record isn't great, but remember, he's taking on his old club as well. It'll be quite a story, this. For Kelechi, Ian Nacho. City hoping that Zach Stefan can come up with something spectacular. But if it's a goal for Leicester City, it's probably the shield for Leicester City. Ian Nacho, the ex-Manchester City man, puts the penalty away. So late in the day, in front of the fans. Well, he was the player fouled, he was the player who scored, and he takes the bow. And on first view, and it looked a very good penalty. He's hit with power. Maybe a bit close to the goalkeeper. Does he have a chance here? Oh, he gets a touch on it, maybe. It's not that good a penalty. It goes through the goalkeeper's hands. It just beats him for power here. Gets a bit lucky here, Nacho. Doesn't matter. I know just what you mean, Stuart, but a good penalty is one that's scored. <laughs> however, <Absolutely>. however <laughs> uh, it, it was very close to Stefan's fingertips. And now Manchester City. Ake has stayed on, so uh, that part of the uh, adjudication has worked in Manchester City's favour. Well, I said to make it a proper football occasion, it needed a, a late winning goal. And... Uh, Perhaps a surprise the way it happened. Can Leicester see it through now? We're hearing that might be four added minutes. But they're on the charge again with Daka. Can he play the pass here? And it's Ake who sticks out a heel. And make sure it's not going to be 2 0. We're into the four added minutes. And here's Grealish. They need him now, the new signing. The £100 million man. And on he goes. He stays on his feet. Dewsbury Hall. Ruben Diaz was also booked in the hullabaloo after the penalty award, as well as Fernandinho. In by Mendy. Thomas gets out of the way, like a Matador getting away from the ball. And there's the man who could get out of the way. Terrible bit of play from Ake. He had lots of time on the ball. He pondered, he thought about things. And he made a real mess of it. And committed the foul as well. Frustration for Guardiola. Jasper Michael getting the hurry up. And Paul Tierney. Towards the Inacho. Kicked on by Jewsbury Hall. Put in by Inacho. Daka couldn't quite keep it. Master can run down the clock. 
Ball Brighton just teased it in, but that will bend through to the goalkeeper. It's probably not the wisest ball from a, a usually pretty wise player. Bernardo Silva. Grealish has come infield, leaving the space for Benjamin Mendy. And he's involved. This is Rodri. This is Jean Cancelo. Only at a time, Manchester City at Wembley. Mares. All back for Leicester. In by Ruben Diaz. First header one, and Thomas gets the second header. And might have been fouled in the process. To Fulton, he just has a look, sees one or two bodies scattered around the penalty area and says, well, I've got to play on here. Well, Nathan Ake was up there, desperate to make amends for that mistake. Fernandinho won the first ball in the air. Ake couldn't win the second. It's blue here, but not Manchester City blue. Ricardo, Sumare, and now Ndidi, back to Schmeichel. That's as far out of harm's way as possible. Okay, underneath it. That's the pressing successfully. Not a place to lose the ball or a time to lose the ball, and Sumare didn't lose it. So Yunchu. Now or never for Manchester City. Another sliced by uh, Stefan, and the offside flag might just seal their hash. Well, they started very well. On the first half, you'd have given them the shield, wouldn't you? You certainly would have done. They looked well organised. They found little spaces in behind Manchester City's midfield. They had those three or four chances in the first half. They looked the better team. Hasn't been the case in the second half. Man City have started to dominate play. But they haven't created enough chances. Leicester have defended well when they've had to. And Leicester win the Shield for only the second time, 50 years after the first. That was 1-0 in 1971. It's 1-0 in 2021 in dramatic circumstances. Kelechi Inacho, once of Manchester City, brought down by Nathan Ake, picked himself up to plant home the penalty in front of absolutely joyous Foxes fans. And Manchester City, usually so, at home at Wembley, are beaten here. Stuart Robson. Well, there's still a lot of players arguing with the referee down there. Man City players aren't happy with the decision, but it seemed a fairly straightforward one to me. OK, made a mess of it. Yeah, Nacho made the most of it and scored the penalty as well. Great scenes around the stadium here. The Leicester fans have turned up in numbers. And Jack Grealish is a runner-up on his debut. Pep Guardiola sanguine in the end. But football is back. The protests as much as the drama as well. And Leicester City by the same scoreline. But they won the FA Cup earlier this year and planted themselves in this fixture. Have... More cause for celebration for their tie ownership. They have beaten Manchester City in the Community Shield by one late goal to nil. Generally, Stuart, what did you make of the the football we saw? The the fitness levels maybe a little bit light. It looked hard going at times. Yeah, to a certain degree. It looked as though Man City were trying something out, something different when they're playing out from the back. The two fullbacks tucked into a ne very narrow position, almost to try and create an overload there and play around Leicester. Didn't always work for them. It looks like they struggled to get it out wide at times. I thought Leicester looked very well organised. They knew exactly where their next pass was. Vardy had those couple of chances in the first half, but Pereira did well down the right-hand side. Bertrand, it was a good debut from him. 
and the two centre halves. And Marte have all played very well. And when Jack Grealish came on, one or two good touches, but wasn't able to really affect the game in the end. Now, Brendan Rodgers has a deserved reputation. Yes, his critics will say they finished fifth two years running when they only had a home game to get something from finishing the four, fourth uh, Champions League position. But they are getting trophies. They've now got two, and Pep Guardiola is the first person to tell you that this is a trophy that counts. It's not a pre-season tournament, and I think you can see by the response from the Leicester fans that they've taken it suitably seriously, and certainly that both teams did. But uh, such drama at the end. Absolutely, you mentioned it. It would be a good game if there was a late goal, and a late goal came. And Nathan Aki went put a foot wrong, and I think made the mistake. Just took too long on the ball. Didn't think that Ianacho was going to really close him down. Just a lack of concentration, and it's cost his team here. Well, they are reveling in it. Michael Brighton, James Madison. It wasn't Tielemans this time. He wasn't on the pitch when the winning goal went in. But he made it happen with that uh, stunner of a goal to win the FA Cup. They've got a nice image, Leicester City. There's obviously a lot of supported jealousy of the super rich clubs. Leicester, make no mistakes, you are backed very well, aren't they? We can't yep. say they're, they're paupers from the East Midlands, not by any means. But they're, they're much admired for the way they overcame the tragedy of the loss of their chairman in that awful helicopter accident so close to the ground. And it's reinforced the, the bond between the Thai owners and the football club and the, the footballers, some of whom were there on that terrible evening and are still here at the club, have really taken it on. And then uh, Jamie Vardy still saying, if you'd have played me a little bit like that, it wouldn't have been uh, so close. But he's still got life in the legs and uh, the hunger of somebody who came late on the scene. Oh, well, Leicester's a great story, isn't it, as you mentioned. They play some good football now. They were known as a counter-attacking team when they won the title. There's some very good players, mind you. But they now can pass the ball, they can defend well. They've got a, a young manager. I think, he's, I think we can still say he's fairly young, Brendan Rodgers. I think he would say that. Yeah, who's quite innovative with his game plan. He's a likeable manager. The fans love him. The players and fans have got great relationship. When you go to the stadium, and so to some extent, he's, still there. he's come again, hasn't he, from Liverpool, where he improved the team, but wasn't in the end quite the, uh, the right man for the job at that period of time. That's the, the owner's thought, anyway. Well, he got criticised, didn't he, for thinking more about his own public image. I think people yeah. suggested a bit carried away, a bit maybe. carried away with himself. Yeah. But he's come back, did a very good job at Celtic. He's done a very good job at Leicester here. Well, because of the COVID issues, which are still very much to the fore in the British society, the presentation is going to be done in a, a healthy way, I guess is the best way to describe it. And Leicester City is not the climbing the steps at Wembley these days. But that doesn't matter to those players, it's winning at Wembley. And whose shirt he wants. <laughs> well, plenty down from Manchester. But plenty more, I'm sure, for them to celebrate in the months ahead and put aside the disappointment of today. I said a tale of two cities. Usually the champions win, not mm. always in this community shield, and that was Manchester City, of course. But this, as it was last season, with Arsenal, who were the FA Cup winners, who lifted the shield. And the presentation to the players. And Nathan Ake reflects. He's uh, understudy, really, and you mentioned Laporte doesn't play that often so 
know, when you're in, you really want to make the most of it. And as Stuart rightly said, he was playing very effectively. Always looks the part. Because Nathan Ackie is, don't get me wrong, he's a, an excellent player. I saw him as a youngster playing for the Dutch national teams. He was head and shoulders above everybody else. And then didn't quite get into the first team at Chelsea. But he was excellent at Bournemouth. That's why he got the move to Man City. And he's just struggled to get into the side, which a lot of players do at Man City. So when you do get your chance, you have to make the most of it. And that's a big mistake for him today. They thought they got away with it, I think. But they thought that the shot that was saved so well by Stefan for Pats and Dakar was the next phase of yep. play. And I, I can only guess that's what the complaints were about. Yeah, I think City were saying, well, they've had their chance. Yeah. You're allowed play to go on, and he's missed the chance. You can't then go back to a, give a penalty. I don't think the referee's got every right to. I think it was more that than complaining it wasn't a penalty in the first place. Kasper Schmeichel, who knows a thing or two about penalties in this stadium. He saved one from Harry Kane at the end that uh, Ian Nacho scored, but Kane put in the rebound. And on the subject of Harry Kane, where does that leave Manchester City? No goals in the Champions League final, no goals in the Community Shield. Yeah, they just lacked a cutting not, edge, not didn't com they? Not comparable fixtures, but you know, yeah. it's, it's, maybe it's a point worth making, Joe. Yeah. I think Guardiola, after that Champions League game, the final would be disappointed that his team didn't create more in that top third of the field. The next stage was to go and get a player like Grealish. The next stage has to be to go and get a centre forward, I would say. So the players actually collecting their medals. Peter McCormick, the interim FA chairman, will hand over the shield itself. It's help yourself time. Consistent competitors for honours these days. So Chu took on the responsibility, no Fofana, no Evans. Harvey Barnes back with a medal. And Jamie Vardy last but one. Kasper Schmeichel, who had such a great Euro 2020, ending with Denmark's defeat here in the semi-final, is a winner at Wembley today. Leicester City outfoxing Manchester City. And the roar of anticipation, which is now part of the trophy lift, starts at the Leicester end of the ground. Casper waits for the backroom staff to join in the players who weren't on the team sheet today to make sure it's a real collective as it has been on the field. Congratulations, Leicester City who will take home the FA Community Shield. Well, in the end, though, you have to grab a medal. The actual trophy lift was pretty spectacular. It certainly was. Flames going up all around the stadium. All these Leicester fans have stayed to see the trophy lift. We saw it in May. We've seen it again here. Leicester are victorious. And their African contingent definitely reveling in the uh, in the moment. And Ianacho, the Nigerian, scoring the decisive goal that makes uh, Soyuncu a winner, and Didi a winner, Brendan Rodgers a winner. going to go to the fans here to be great for them and the players it's a great bond between the fans and players at Leicester City what a moment champagne for Leicester City it fell flat for Manchester City the football is back the fans are back for Leicester the smiles are very much back and for them it's been a great evening from the man at the top to the man who scored the goal to the manager who's put it all together. Congratulations.
Leicester. Winning it is special because you had to win the trophy earlier in the year to be here. So you, you earn the right spectacularly. And if you can round it off by taking another scout, particularly that of Manchester City, very, very special. Well done, Leicester. Commiserations to Manchester City. And we all look forward to what lies ahead for these two and for all the big clubs as they start off again on the road for the Premier League title, the FA Cup, which Leicester will try and defend. It's been a great evening for this shade of blue.